Hi, Todd Martin here with The Walking Code. In this video, I'm going to describe how to walk upstairs without pain. In this section of the video, I'm going to begin to use the descriptions of the core techniques and the direction root power system to describe each component as we move up the stairs. This is for primarily the people who are studying the walking code. And if you aren't currently studying the walking code, I would highly recommend it because it really can help you learn how to use the core muscles specifically to get the sort of movements that you want and to keep the body properly aligned as you're doing it. The first position we're going to look at when climbing the stairs is after I have placed my swing leg on the step. My root is still on the standing leg on the ground and has not yet changed to the stair. The core technique being used here is push with extension of the left leg hip. So push means I'm extending my left hip and I am turning my upper torso to the right or clockwise and I'm turning my lower torso to the left or counterclockwise. So what that means with the direction root power system is my direction of upper torso rotation is clockwise, the root is on the left, and the power is extension of the left hip. When I need to transition my weight to the step before moving upwards, I need to change the core technique of push to the core technique of reach back. Reach back requires continued extension of my left hip. I continue the direction clockwise with the upper torso, but I've changed the root to the right leg by tucking on the right or activating my lower abs on the right. So I've changed from push, which has direction clockwise, root counterclockwise on the left, and power, extension of the left hip, to reach back, which is direction continuing clockwise. Now the root has changed to the right, and I continue with the power extension of the left hip. So we transition from push to reach back by tucking the pelvis. The next component of the step, I need to shift my spine over my heel. This is done by changing the reach back core technique to the reach core technique. So what is the difference? The difference is in the direction of rotation of the upper torso. The root and the power remain the same. I've gone from push to reach back by changing the root to the right, and I go from reach back to reach by changing the direction to now turning towards my extending left hip. My direction is now counterclockwise, rotation of the upper torso, root on the right, and power extension of the left hip. Now I'm ready to transition to the final component where I lift up, and that is going to be transitioning reach to push by changing the power from extension of the left hip to extension of the right hip. That now pushes the body up, extending the hip as well as extending the knee until I'm reached my full standing position. Let's look beginning at push with extension of the left hip, reach back with extension of the left hip, reach with extension of the left hip, and then push with extension of the right hip. At this point, I'm going to change push with extension of the right hip to reach back with extension of the right hip by tucking my pelvis on the left, changing the root from my right leg to my left leg. At this point, I can now shift the weight using reach with extension of the right hip and then push with extension of the left hip. Since I'm at the top of the stairs now, I can change push with the left hip to lift with the left hip to begin walking again. Let's go through the cycle, first with the core techniques and then with direction root power. Place the weight with push from the left hip, 
change the weight with reach back from the left hip, change the weight fully to the standing leg with reach with extension of the right hip, and then complete the motion with push with the right hip. I'm now going to cycle back to reach back with extension of the right hip, reach with extension of the right hip, and then push with extension of the left hip, and then start walking again with lift with flexion of the left hip. Now let's look at the movements using the direction root power analysis. When I place the foot on the stair, I'm using direction clockwise, root on the left, power, extension of the left hip. I change weight, so now I have direction still clockwise, root on the right, and power, extension of the left hip. Now I'm going to fully change weight by changing the direction to counterclockwise, root on the right, power, extension of the left hip, and I complete the motion by extending the right hip. So now I have direction, counterclockwise, root on the right, power, extension of the right hip. I transition to the next step by changing the root only to the left, placing the left leg onto the step. I can now cycle back again. Notice that each component of the step, my spine remains vertical. Push, reach back, reach, push. Reach back, reach, push, lift. At no time do I bend forward or lean the body forward. Spine is aligned, knee is aligned. At this portion, my spine is still aligned, my knee is still over the ankle. Then when I shift up, my knee shifts slightly forward, but still it's back of the toes. And then I push up and my knee actually retracts as I push up. So the knee never moves forward over the toes, which is going to increase the pressure into the kneecap and increase the risk of getting pain. Now I'm going to backtrack a little bit and just look at the core techniques for getting the swing leg onto the step initially. We don't generally think about this. We generally just do this naturally like most of our other movements, but it does uh, bear paying a little attention to how we do this correctly. Because we need to stop the body weight from moving forward when we place the foot on the step. Normally when I walk, after I fully root my left leg, I'm going to shift my whole spine forward to take a step. I don't want to do that when I'm walking upstairs. I need to stop my body weight moving forward. So I'm going to go from set right, flexion of the right hip, torsional rotation on the left, to sink right by turning my upper torso counterclockwise. So I now have flexion of the right hip and concordant or counterclockwise rotation of the upper torso and lower torso. Now I push myself forward with the left hip to place the foot on the stair. So I extend my left hip as I turn my upper torso clockwise and that's what places the foot on the step. So that is a full description of the core movements for moving upstairs without pain and keeping the spine and the knees properly aligned. If you haven't already signed up for the Walking Code online course, please click on the link below the video and that will bring you to the website so you can sign up. It is a great course that can help you learn to move more fluidly, move with more confidence, and ultimately move without pain. Thank you for watching.